from from your from your presentation, that means you you don't really believe Chris Hilton is the man to transform affairs for the Blasters. I initially thought he should be given the opportunity, but he made a wrong decision by not featuring that Richard Lampton. That Richard Lampton, I don't know him from Adam. I've never seen him. I've never met him physically before. I only saw him in play. But when he's playing football and you watch carefully, you can know that. If you know football, you can know that this is a great midfielder. You watch his distribution, his attack, and scheming and maneuvering. We don't have that in the boys who played yesterday. We didn't have it. I didn't see any of them yesterday. Um, Doc, th there's this question of interest when it comes to the Blasters. A lot of Ghanaians have interest in that. That is the bonus of the Blasters. Um, South Africa Football Association have decided that they are going to have a fixed bonus. That is $7 million if um, the players are able to win the AFCON. That's the Bafana Bafana. But um, they've also agreed with the players that if they are not able to win the ultimate, which is the trophy, they have no bonus for them. Do you think Ghana should start applying such rules or um, start such engagement with our players when it comes to um, bonuses at the AFCON? Uh, look, incentives help a lot. But nationalism is a key to success in sports. Now, not quite long ago, I had a list of allowances that I received after matches by each individual in countries all over the world, in football. And to my surprise, Ghana had the highest in terms of money. Even higher than what an English boy will receive, or a boy from France, or a boy from Denmark, or a boy from Germany, or a boy from Portugal. I was shocked. It is not the money that drives them. It is a pride that I come from this country. In fact, that list was sent to me by Toby Afede. If I ask Toby, I'm sure he can produce it for me again. I was shocked. Now, during my term as coach, as a FA head, GFA head, first and foremost, well, that was the first time that Ghana qualified for the World Cup. I was a chairman of a committee that interviewed Dukovic, the coach, and we picked him up. And that was the first time we went on the world map, uh, what do you call world map, as far as football is concerned. The second one, I was an ambassador in Serbia when Kusin Yantechi and Papu got in touch with me to get them a coach. And I brought Milu to this country. He also qualified it. Now, when you talk about incentives, when I was FA boss, I spoke with President Kofu. He's alive. You can go ask him. I told him, I said, Kofi, I think it's time we did certain things for these boys to give them a bit of a hope and encouragement. Let's see to the payment of their flights. Let's pay them in dollars. You can go and check. It was my time that we started paying them in US dollars and started putting them in four five-star hotels. Uh -huh. And believe me, Asamoja is there, the others are there. Their performance was excellent. Look at their performance at the World Cup. Okay. Both in Germany and in South Africa. So as I said earlier, incentives work, but the key 
to me, to success in any sport is nationalism. Okay. Um, so, um, incentives do motivate players, but they, first of all, they should have that um, love for the nation. That will push them to the next level. Absolutely. I mean, without, it, it, look, this is international competition. Have you ever watched carefully? Have you ever watched carefully when Germans are playing matches? When Germans yeah. are playing matches? Yeah. Eh? When Germans are playing matches? They play football as if they are at war with you. Okay. You put on. You, you don't take this time to watch some of this. Thing. A German in any international feature to him is a war. We know all. Ge we know Germans have always been war minded mm -hmm. since the time of Kaiser and uh, Adolf Hitler. Germans, any game that they are. You watch it. That, that I'm telling you, watch it. To them, it's war. So they will kill themselves. When Bagunawa was in this country, we had a discussion. And he even mentioned that to me. You follow me? So, please, if you don't have that feeling that this country believes for me that I'm dying for this country on this speech, then forget about it. All those I saw yesterday, they were all careful about their their legs. Hmm. There are no boys who will die for the country. So for me, I don't see them getting far. I will be shocked if they get to semi-finals. Okay. Um, th this this brings uh, me to a question of Mohammed Kudus. Initially, it wasn't part of our plan, but it appears that he's in with um, his own physio from West Ham. That is one part of it. The second part is um, he he did not participate in our preparation in Kumase, citing reasons of minor injuries. A lot of Ghanaians feel disappointed that he is not showing enough commitment towards the Blasters. Um, do you think he is is that talented enough that we should give him a special treatment, or the coach should have been bold enough um, to get him out of the team if he wasn't following the the camping rules by requesting? Um, outrageous demands from um, the blasters. No, but if a footballer is unable to play because of injuries, it will be totally wrong to force him to play. And I think a footballer from a country like England definitely the, the, the technical men would not allow that. So I wasn't surprised that uh, I was a bit surprised when pressure was being put on them to release him to come and join the team. Okay. So that is the that is the reason why you always have to have a standby. If we had a standby who is equally good, and some standbys many a time you get them from the local the local team. If you have have a standby who is very good, there will be no worry. Because, you know, human beings, anything can happen at any time. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. For instance, I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, and I'm talking about the age of 10, <laughs> we squeeze our way to the Crasport Stadium when there's a match between Kotoko and Haas. You can imagine that time, I'm talking about it, over 50 years ago. More than that. Now, we all want to see particular players. Okay. The reason why the stadium is empty is that we don't have players with skills at the moment. We go there to see particular players. Everybody wants, maybe, you are a house of folk man, you want to see Ufedo, a right winger. Somebody wants to see Baba Yara. For Kotoko, a right winger. Somebody wants to see a left winger, like Salis for Kotoko. Somebody wants to see a Griffin, okay. a left winger for Hasofo. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to see a Griffin, a left winger. Somebody wants to see the best central defender, Akuda Akon. So, somebody wants to see that for Kotoko, either as a people watch it 
or Dogomoru. I mean, these were people, they, they, these were footballers who, who were committed. You can't get them now. There is no nationalism. Do you follow me? Yeah, I do. I'm not just in football. I do. The entire sporting fraternity in Ghana, it is, look, can you believe we used to play international matches in cricket in Ghana? Cricket. Now go anywhere in the country and, and, and let me know if you the school which is playing cricket now. This is it. We are completely outclassed in boxing. We can't even qualify boxing. Wow. Boxing also, also for four things. Yeah. So that should tell you there's something basically wrong. Mm. 